you have the the full review. We do not, however, have reviews, or you do not have have review units of the RX four seventy yet. No, or four sixty for that matter. I don't even or pricing for the four seventy. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you. I didn't really pay much attention to what the schedules were for those products because I didn't get them, and I was kind of slammed right. with the testing of the one product I did get. So, right. um, were there other no reviews posted up? No. No, as okay. far as I know, there are no 470s anywhere uh, in review. All right, so I didn't miss sale. something dramatic. No, that's not what I, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying like you know they they talked a bunch about the 480. Then AMD talked yeah. a bunch about the 470 and how the 470 was going to be VR ready, which basically makes it a 970, which is supposed to sell well. The 970 is selling still selling for a uh, almost 150 to 180 more than what the 470 should be selling for. But let us talk about the 480, which is already sold out, but is a wonderful alternative should it come back in stock at its MSRP. Mm -hmm. uh, for at this point, I'm going to say the 970 and bordering on the 980. Is that aggressive? Uh, it is aggressive. I would say this is much closer to 970 than 980 okay. um, in terms of performance. It is It is essentially equivalent to the Radeon R9 390 in terms of performance. And it's it ranges from being like 10% slower than the 970 and Grand Theft Auto 5 to being 40% faster in one case, oh. which I think is the DX12 implementation of Hitman. So there's a, there's a pretty wide variance there. Um, it's an impressive card. So we knew a little bit about specs. You can see on the specs table on the first page of our review. Um, the interesting thing that we didn't know about uh, how Polaris works and how AMD is kind of pushing this stuff is on the clock speeds. If you see there, um, since the introduction of GPU boost way, way back in the day of the GTX 680 from NVIDIA, um, the idea of a single clock speed rating for graphics cards started to become less meaningful because uh, right. they had a base clock and they had a boost clock. AMD with Polaris now has true adaptive clocking built into their architecture. So they too as well have two clocks. Um, and they call them base and boost as well. But they're actually, uh, they have different meanings, of course, because you don't want to make things simplified. Um, the, the base, what, what AMD calls the base clock speed, which is listed on that table as a uh, 1,120 megahertz, is the typical clock speed that you will see um, mm -hmm. in a variety of games, in a variety of resolutions, in a variety of uh, synthetic tests, right? This is kind of what they have uh, tested and analyzed to be the typical clock speed for that particular GPU. Uh, and then they list a boost clock, which is not on that table, but it's 1266. And that is actually the maximum clock speed you will see at the highest voltage state if in a perfect scenario where the GPU is running very cool, the um, the case is running very cool. Uh, and, you know, I would say in general, it's probably not, you're, not, you're never going to hit 1266 right. with a reference cooler. Um, but when we get some aftermarket coolers, that you may see may see some of that uh, being the case. There's four gig and eight gig variants that have slightly different memory speeds, um, 150 watt TDP, and a hundred ninety nine dollar price tag for the four gig variant, and two thirty nine for the eight gig variant. So specification wise, it's 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 a pretty impressive product for uh, for the price point, and yeah. you know, competing wise with the R nine three ninety and the GTX two seventy. Now, obviously. Prices on the GTX 970 have come down right. a lot just because of the Pascal launch and then all the run-up to this release of AMD's Polaris architecture. So at the time they announced the RX 480, uh, the GTX 970 was still 320 bucks or $330, right. I think. Um, at least. So this was a $120 advantage in terms of uh, its performance right. per dollar, right? Now uh, it's since nearly then, a $60 advantage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Things have gone down. We knew this would be the case. NVIDIA's not dumb. Uh, and they're also, you know, NVIDIA's kind of waiting. To, they want to get through stock on a bunch of stuff because they have, you know, their next generation parts uh, to think about as well. So right. uh, on the last page there, we do have like pricing performance per dollar comparisons in, uh, in a graph format if you like to kind of try to see everything all at once. Um, and you can see there's actually... Um, some, some actually go down to the to the to the second graph on that on that page because the in our comparisons we included the R9 380 and the GTX 960, but they're so far out of class in terms of performance that including them in that data uh, kind of um, skews it quite a bit I would say. Uh, but if you look there, you get an idea of the blue bar on the left, 
of each set is the uh, the new RX 480. Then you have the R9 390 in the orange and the, uh, the GTX 970 in yellow. And clearly, even with the price reductions on the GTX 970, the uh, RX 480 is the better value in terms of performance right. per dollar than any of those cards. Um, and that's that's what they were going for. That's their goal. Their goal is to gain market share. Their goal is to get these cards into people's hands. And right. that's the way you do it, right? You can do it in performance per dollar. That's what people really uh, pay attention to um, in regards to new product launches like this. Um, it's, yeah, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's impressive. I mean, it's this is... You know, I mean, I three months ago, I don't see you and I having a conversation that ever leads to us like, well, you know, I bet this summer AMD is going to drop something. It's going to completely blow the 970 out of the water for over $120 less when it ships. Um, <laughs> at this point, you know, you could buy a 970, um, mm -hmm. but I think it makes a lot more sense to either wait for a 1070 or two after the prices have dropped down or to wait for an RX 480 after the prices have dropped down. Um, and what's really frustrating, uh, you know, uh, above and beyond the fact that, okay, so the, the 1080, the, the 480 is, is now well over MSRP, uh, you know, I, I want to say 70, 40, it's, it's close to $110 over MSRP if you're up on, uh, amazon.com. The GTX yeah. 1080 and 1070 are still ridiculously expensive. The Founders Edition, and I'm, I'm not a particular, at this point I find the Founders Edition really irritating. Like, um, <laughs> let's do an early the Founders Edition release so you can pay an extra hundred bucks because we like money. Um, so, you know, the, 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 the businessman part of me is like, yeah. You didn't even have to paint it pink or put a decal or a game in the box. Um, but um, you, my crankiness about the, the Founders Edition of the 1080 and 1070 uh, aside, a GTX 1080 is selling for upwards of $800 now, which puts it almost $400 over MSRP. And now, uh, you know, I go to PC Per this morning and, uh, you know, I'm catching up on things. And Sebastian's got a write-up that we have a leak of a GTX 1060 um, which may or may not be the more direct competitor for the RX 480 and will certainly probably stick a fork in the GTX 970. Uh, and then as if that's not enough, uh, we turn around uh, and uh, Sebastian also has a post of this giant collection of AMD's current We're in the Game promotion, which apparently gives us a sneak peek at the RX 490 graphics card, at least in name. Uh, and Bristol Ridge APUs. So now we've got something that may be pushing towards the, you know, the the you know the the 980 level of performance from AMD, presumably at a competitive price point. Uh, oh, and remember how we told you there's no new GPU you know, or CPUs coming till next year? Well, technically there is, but there are some APUs coming out for <laughs> in, the, in the Bristol Ridge lineup, which is, um, you know. Uh, Gee whiz. Um, and it's is, clearly uh, a, a busy summer it's a, for, it's, for graphics, right? I mean... It's going to be awesome once the supply is there. But right now, it sucks buying a GPU. If you if if you if you're HTC Vive or you're you know or, or you're buying an HTC Vive or an Oculus Rift or you're upgrading your monitor, this sucks. Like, you know, I'm looking over here, you know, it's like, oh, there's a 950 I just bought like six weeks ago. Great. Um, <laughs> not that right. I particularly need that much more than the 950 for the 1080p monitor that's attached to, but you know, for that money, like, you know, it's, 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 you know, I'm frustrated because I look at this and I'm like, okay, or maybe I should be excited because, you know, they're pretty much are no serious uh, gaming CPUs or for that matter, work CPUs, desktop CPUs coming out um, until CES 2017, pretty much the earliest, unless somebody blows a gasket at Intel, which I really don't see happening, which yeah. means if you want to build a VR rig, if you want to build a gaming machine, if you want to build anything that requires 3D graphics, just sit tight and wait for the prices on these GPUs to settle. 